my name is Clive from Clive's Art and I'm taking a deep breath for the simple reason is I've got to explain what's behind me. No, not about the easel, about that circular thing that's above my right shoulder or on the screen. It's my left, isn't it? I don't know. Your left, my right. I know. I'm having a cup of tea because this thing it's got all the colours on it, right? You've got red, red, orange, orange, yellow, orange, yellow, yellow, green, green, blue, green, blue, blue, violet, violet, red, violet, and back to red. And you've got tinted stones and shades, values, neutrals, primary, secondary, tertiary. You've got monochromatic, you've got annual you've got complementary colours, you've got split complementary colours, you've got triadic, and you've got double triadic colours. My head it hurts. I got steam coming out of my ears. Now how am I going to explain this to somebody that don't even know what a colour wheel is, let alone what a primary colour is. So the first thing I've got to do basically is get changed, put on my um, my Clive's Art t-shirt and that will make my head work a little bit easier. So I'm just going to get changed. Boom! <laughs> as easy as that, right. Okay, so let's have a, a little brief description now how the colour wheel actually came about. Now this is a little bit of a history lesson. I may not be 100% accurate, but it's as accurate as I can possibly remember it. Now, this chap was sitting under a tree and got hit on the head by an apple, or two, or three. Yes, he did. Sir Isaac Newton. Now, he, he, he was obviously sitting there maybe one day. He was looking up, he seen a rainbow. I don't know. Nobody knows exactly how he came about this, but I don't know anyway. There might be somebody out there that does. But basically what he did was he split sunlight into red, orange, yellow, green, cyan, blue and then he joined the two ends together and it formed a circle. Now each one of those um, had colours, had a musical, musical note attached to it uh, like you do on the scale, you know. You know when, if you were anybody musical you know there's a, there's a musical scale so he attached each note to a colour and then he found that there was something there because certain notes corresponded with certain colours then that's when the colour wheel was, color wheel was actually born. Okay so about a hundred years after Sir Isaac Newton did what he did with the colour wheel which is behind me here, Jonathan Wolfgang Goals I think his, his name was um, looked at the colours effects. Now he noticed that if you look at this um, blue felt cool and yellow felt warm so that's, if you think about it, it's self-explanatory, isn't it? So he then developed groups of colours. So you get the red, the orange and the yellow fall mainly in the warm side of the colour wheel. And then you go greens, blues and violets and more into the cool side of the colour wheel. Now, this was still under development, obviously. Um, I'm not sure on the exact date and it's gone through several processes since then to actually get the colour wheel I'm just going to move blue tech earth to actually get the colour wheel that we know of today so that's just a little insight now what I'm going to do now I'm going to try to explain all the relevant um, parts of this colour wheel I'm not going to go too complicated you see the charts behind me are based on three primary colours now the three primary colours are red, yellow and blue. Now they are known out there and they are, the reason they're called primary colours is because they cannot be mixed. They, they are naturally occurring um, pigments from like uh, the blues, uh, lapis, lazuli, uh, minerals and that type of thing. So I'm not going to go into that in too much depth. but. Yeah, the, so they are your what they call primary colours. Now we've got a serious problem today um, with primary colours because what you've got to understand is that in the wise, uh, wisest wisdom of paint manufacturers we've got like I don't know how many different types of red, how many different types of yellow and how many different types of blue. Now this all causes problems for us as artists so what we've got to do is try and find a standardised colour from this, which is the colour wheel. Now, I've been looking and looking and looking and over the years I have come up with three colours that I mix as a primary. So they are my personal primary blue, primary red and primary yellow. And 
through trial and error I found that they work really well. Now the problem is you've got is if you mix different types of red and to your standardized blue and yellow you'll get different results because some reds are brighter than others and, and duller you know what I mean so it, it can cause problems so what I suggest you do if you don't do anything else is select three colors a primary red a primary yellow and a primary blue or use what I've got I'll show you the difference in just a second and then um, once you've got those you can buy them and you can keep them in stock and then you can mix all the colors and you can see behind me it's as simple as that and it really is simple it's like everything else we need to understand the basic fundamental principles of what we're about to do and that is mixing colors now as you can see um, on the board there are a vast amount of colors out there and they all stem from three colors yes your primary colors so we know what our primary color is now it's a red a yellow and the blue that we stick to religiously and that's how we mix our colors okay so as you can see up there now that's the primary colors then we get secondary colors and tetri colors so what it is when you mix yellow and red together you get an orange and then we'll go through that process in just a second so mixing two colors together the primary colors together are going to give you your secondary colors but we're not going to go down there quite yet so let's get back to the board and um, we'll explain things in a little bit more detail as far as choosing your primary colors are right so um, what I've got is a selection of reds yellows and blues now these are vast um, there's so many reds and so many yellows and so many blues that I'm not even going to go and explain everyone in detail because it's just not worth it so um, the reds I got selected on the board are these okay so the reds we've actually got are cr uh, crimson red permanent residual crimson and process magenta now you can see the difference in those already you know there's a little bit more orange in that one and there's a little bit darker the crimson is a, a lot darker than the cadmium and then the yellows um, this is a, a cadmium yellow medium hue a cadmium yellow deep and a lemon yellow and you can see the difference there as well so this is all going to reflect so imagine mixing that one with that one you're going to get a different effect as if you mix that one with that one or that one and that one so this is what I mean it is get, gets a little bit complicated if you're mixing and changing all your primaries um, ultramarine blue you've got um, a Prussian blue and a Cellulon blue again you can see the difference there now using the color wheel um, and over a period of time all I did is I simply um, painted as many of the reds as I could get my hands on yellows and blues and then I was going through and I was trying to see which one would suit me best as far as the primary colors are concerned and the what I come up with is um, quite simply my personal choice and that is um, cadmium red hue yes a hue is a reflection on the name itself it's just it's just refers to the particular color so it's it's a red hue right throughout that range it's a red hue so um, anyway that's a cadmium red <coughs> again cadmium yellow medium and an ultramarine blue now those are my primary colors and every color mixes I mix as you can see behind me um, always incorporate those as my primaries now you can find blues that are called a primary blue but they're not that easy to get your hands on so what I suggest you do is go to the store find out which ones suit you the best Personally, I recommend these, but uh, that's that's my preference. And then, um, and then do all your color mixes from that. It's as simple as that. So, yeah, as far as you're concerned, there's your primary colors, which is a primary red, a primary yellow, and a primary blue, or a cadmium red, a cadmium yellow medium, and an ultramarine. That is a primary selection. Okay, so I put a chart up on the wall that I just managed to draw very quickly, and I've got the primary colors in place. That's the cadmium red the cadmium yellow medium 
and the ultramarine. Now you can see the ultramarine is quite dark. Now I prefer that colour to be dark. Uh, it's just again personal preference. But if you want to go for a lighter blue there as your primary, then you do that and then you keep that blue as a primary. And so all your colour mixes, as you can see behind me, will be um but they'll all be standardised then. That's all you're doing is trying to standardise a, a primary colour. Now secondary colours are basically two primary colours mixed together. So if we mix a red and a yellow we get an orange. If we mix a, um, a blue and a red we're going to get a violet or a purple. Now um, let's mix an orange and we'll see how we get on with that. But mixing an orange is quite easy. Now what I tend to do is I'll always add the lightest colour first and the darkest colour to it because I can increase the darkness or the tone of that particular colour. Um, but if you try and make an orange and you put red down and you add yellow to it, you've got to put so much yellow to it to get the orange you want, you're going to end up with a big clump of paint. So personally, I'll start with a small amount of the lightest colour. And then I'm just going to go in, get a touch of red, and I'm just going to mix that with a brush. And then that's your secondary colour, orange. And if you want to add a little bit more red, you can do that if you want to darken it to touch. Until you get that orange you were looking for. I know a cardamom orange is quite red, so but that'll be fine. I'll take the excess off my brush and then we'll go and place that into our colour wheel. So mixing a primary red and a primary yellow, we're going to get a secondary orange. Okay chaps, bit of a technical issue there. I put the blue in the wrong segment and I went to put the green next to it and it looked wrong. Anyway, mixed the green, I mixed a bit of yellow and a bit of blue and I got a lovely green. So let's get back to the canvas and, because I've adjusted it, <laughs> I put the blue where it should be and not where it shouldn't be. So it looks a bit better. <laughs> And it doesn't look so dark. There we are. We won. Okay, so we got the green, um, and that goes in this segment here. So that's mixing the blue, the ultramarine blue, and the card yellow medium together, and that's our green. Hey, we've done it right this time. These things happen. Um, I, you know, at the end of the day, we are all human beings, and mistakes can be adjusted pretty quickly with acrylics. So that's a good thing about acrylics. So. Mix in blue and yellow, we get a nice green. Now, what we're going to do now is mix um, the red and the blue to get a violet. So this time I'm going to start with the red. And I'm just going to add a touch of blue to that. And I'm expecting this to be quite a dark violet anyway. I always have difficulty um, mixing purple or violet with ultramarine because ultramarine is quite a dark colour and I don't want this to go too dark. I want this to be more on the red side. I think I'll be alright with that. It does look a bit dark. And we put that in place and make sure it's in the right position this time, Clive. Just a tip of water with that. Now I don't mix many um, violets or purples with... Well, I don't use many of them at all, to be quite honest with you. And if I was going to use this, I would lighten it a little bit with some white anyway. Because it's very rare that I'll use a dark violet, but I mean you can see the violet in that now. Because the blue is dark then obviously it's going to affect the colours as I said. So our primary colours are red, yellow and blue. And by mixing red and yellow together We're going to get an orange and again yellow and blue 
we're going to get a green and blue and red we're going to get a violet or purple secondary colors And these are primary colours. Now a tetri colour is a colour that's mixed with two adjacent colours. And in this case a red and an orange mixed together will give us a red-orange. That's a tetri colour. And then the orange and the yellow would give us a yellow-orange, yellow and green, yellow-green blue green, blue violet, red violet, etc. So they called tetri colours. So two colours on the colour wheel adjacent to each other mixed together is a tetri colour. Looking at this particular or we got the orange so if we mix more red to a part of that orange so we mix in red to orange and that's going to give us a rice red orange And by mixing more yellow to the orange, so just get a bit of yellow and mix that into the orange we got there, which is another tetri colour, which is going to give us a yellow orange. So already you've started the mix colours, which is cool. And again, going round the colour wheel, so if we add a little bit more blue to the green, we're going to get a blue-green, which is this one. So we've got basically a green more towards the blue side of the scale there. Same principle, adding more yellow to the green then. It's going to give us a yellow green. And subsequently adding more red to the violet. That's going to give us a red violet. And more blue to the violet is going to give us a blue violet or a violet that's mainly towards the blue spectrum itself so there's a lot more blue in this violet than there is any other colour which is red in this case So our tetri colours are red orange, yellow orange, yellow green, blue green, blue violet and red violet. So we've covered three major things on this colour wheel. If you mix it, a primary colour, say a red and a yellow, you're going to get an orange. If you mix in a yellow and a blue, you're going to get a green. If you mix blue and a red, you're going to get a violet. Now, those colours you mix by adding two primaries are your secondary colours. So you're going to have red, orange, yellow, green, blue and violet on a scale. Now, if you add um, a red and an orange together, which are going to be tetri, that means they're adjacent on the colour wheel, and then you'll get a red orange and um, an orange and a yellow you get a yellow orange etc 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 so they are going to be your tetri colors and that is it in its simplest form as far as that is concerned now a hue is just another name for a color that's red hue that's a yellow orange hue that's an orange hue yellow orange hue yellow etc 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 so there's your color wheel and that's split down into primaries, secondaries and tetri colours. 
Now we're going to be going on to um, complements and um, what actually sits together. And everything I would say, um, that side the colour wheel is warm and this side is cool. So from the yellows right up to the, about the violet there um, is going to be the cool and then all the reds this side of the colour wheel and yellows and oranges are all warm. So yes it is actually split in half. You've got the warm and the cool colours. So we've, 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 we've accomplished quite a lot today I think, yes. Now I'm going to be going on to um, values and uh, hue, uh, tints and tones and shades and then I'm going to have a look at complementary colours and then how we can actually select certain colours on this chart here that would sit well together and complement each other. So that would be the next stage. So um, without further ado, I'm going to wrap this particular lesson up. Uh, watch this a couple of times to get that into your head, these basic principles, because once we've gone through the next couple of stages, I'm going to be doing charts like that behind us. And I'm going to use all these um, principles then in those charts and give you a bit of a, a start as far as colour mixing is concerned. I'm trying to keep it as simple as I can for a complicated subject. Um, you know, it, it can be it can be complicated, but I'm trying to make it as easy as I possibly can for you. So, um, I'm Clive from Clive's Art. Thank you very much for watching, and join me on the next one, and which is uh, Color Theory Part Two. And um, in the meantime, thank you very much for watching, and uh, please subscribe if you haven't already done so. Keep an eye out for my weekly updates. Join me on Facebook; they they're always there and they'll let you know what's coming up in that particular week. So may God be, go with you. I'm Clive from Clive's Art. Take care. Thank you very much. And don't forget to give me that thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already done so. Bye-bye.